Hey, how's it going there, folks? Welcome back here to a Monday. It is the Earth Master out here, uh, June 10th, 2024. It's about 8 a.m. here, California time, 10 a.m. Central time in Texas. So not out here in California yet, still out here in the great state of Texas. A 1.2 earthquake in the California area is the latest quake there on the globe. We'll get to that here in just a little bit. We did have a, a decent X flare out here earlier uh, this morning from departing sunspot 3697 which is way out here now on the western limb of the sun that is the source of course of numerous x flares here recently and the last time the sunspot was out here on the earth facing side of the sun it produced uh, massive amounts of uh, cmes and x flares and of course the historic aurora event last month well it's just about out there on the far side of the sun once again i don't think we can even see it just barely some of the magnetic structure out here but uh it did produce an x flare an x 1.5 to be exact earlier this morning with a massive cme that is not going to be earth directed due to the location of that sunspot there way out on the western limb of the sun again that's 3697 formerly 3664 of course that number will go down in the history books there for the uh, historic aurora event last month so um, what else we got we got uh, supposedly a g2 class storm incoming here anytime if we look at the detailed forecast shows between 15 18 18 2100 utc time right now the current utc time is about 1501 so technically any time here in the next few hours, we could be seeing the auroras kick up. Unfortunately for us here on the North American side of the Earth, that uh, is not a good time to see the auroras due to the sunlight, uh, sunlight out here, obviously. Uh, so this will more than likely, if it does stir up, will be an event across areas uh, around Europe, Asia, area, Russia, and regions on the opposite side here of me, opposite side of the North American plate. So. That's uh, good for them, obviously, right? They, uh, like I say, I'm uncertain though on if this is going to be a big deal or not. It's just barely going to be a little, little glancing blow there from the CME uh, that kicked up a couple days ago. So here's our forecast for tonight. Uh, again, not expecting much. Uh, this should be after the arrival of the brunt of the material that's expected here in the next few hours. Uh, let's see, the flare threat still remains somewhat elevated here. 25% chance for an X flare, C flare at 75, or uh, M flare at 75, C flare around 99% chance there. And um, proton event still continuing as of right now. It does look like it's weakening a little bit, mainly up there across the northern polar region here, uh, showing some uh, radio blackout there across those areas. Uh, let's see what we got here for the rest of the sun in terms of any future potential areas of watchfulness watch for you know as far as watching doesn't look like there's a lot out here right now um, there's some disorganized sunspots out here facing the earth maybe this area right here shown a little bit of complexity but uh, we are entering into a little quiet spell i believe if we look at the far side of the sun uh, see what's coming around here. The eastern limb is going to be right here, so anything that's over here will be visible in the days ahead. Uh, days ahead. And there's not a lot out here, folks. I think we're going to be looking at a couple weeks of very quiet space weather conditions here. <clears throat> All right, earthquake activity. Uh, covering the trimmer real quick. Let me bring that up here, where we did see some further activity there along the Cascadia yesterday 473 epicenters again in the southern end of the cascadia subduction zone this has just been a about a two to three week long event here let me go back to last month and show you guys last 30 days looks like it kicked up here around the 20th of may and it's been kind of consistent out here since then and the majority of these quakes let me show or not quakes but tremors have occurred down into the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone as you can see on a broad scale here extending at the ex extreme southern end a little bit up north here across you know portions of 
getting up here towards the northern edge of the uh, subduction zone itself, which extends up here to the Queen Charlotte Sound. But the majority of the concentra uh, concentrated tremor has remained here at the southern end. So still kind of watching that. During this tremor event, we have seen some elevated earthquake earthquake activity out here recently. And let's pull up the last seven days here. Uh, show you guys, we did see a four pointer here on the southern end of the Cascadia, 4.3, a couple days ago. And a few other ones on here. It doesn't look like they're showing. It looks like we have to go back a little bit more uh, to see what we've got. I don't want to clutter the map here with a bunch of quakes, but you know, even some activity up here um, on the Cascadia Basin level itself, 1.6, 2.0. Uh, but most of the activity has been confined here to the extreme southern end of the Cascadia, far as obvious uh, pressure and um, earthquake activity resulting from that tremor movement that we've been seeing here in the last couple weeks. So kind of watching it, um, you know, I've said it in the past here, any type of elevated tremor is a time to be watchful because that's telling me right here that things are under strain. We wouldn't have tremor out here unless they were under strain out here across the Cascadia subduction zone. So keep a, keep an eye on that um, over the last 24 hours here. I think we only seen one from last night. 19 kilometers here for a 2.2 that is upstream from the tremor. Again, close to the locked area of the Cascadia subduction zone. Uh, the rest of California out here, very minimal movement today. Small amount of quake activity here just off the San Andreas Fault with um, a 1.8 near Gilroy being the latest quake. Southern California, pretty quiet. Look at that. Not a whole lot going on out here aside from some smaller quake activity, mainly uh, from yesterday. Intermountain West area is pretty quiet as well. Texas, Oklahoma, New Madrid, pretty quiet. Um, just got typical movement out here in the oil fields. A lot from yesterday and some from today as well. Uh, let's see what else we got. One little lonesome quake here out in Georgia from yesterday. Nothing going on across the East Coast. So on a broad scale view, there's really not a whole lot that has stirred up here in the last 24 hours. The latest 4.4 here uh, just underneath the Sumatra area. Now that's pretty deep here. The Java Trench extends right about here at the northern end and um, that's 175 kilometers for a 4.4. This is one area that really hasn't seen um, a huge amount of earthquake activity compared to other regions backstream here. Uh, so we might be looking at maybe some further movement up here across the Andaman Sea with that deeper activity triggering right now. Uh, that could be a sign of some further surface movement about ready to take place here in this area. So keep an eye there on the Java Trench with that four pointer uh, just coming in right now fairly deep into the area. There was one also up here across the Andaman Sea just outside there from this morning as well. So. Yeah, locally it looks like this area underneath some strain today. And as I mentioned, there's not a whole lot of newer earthquake activity out here. Nothing really shown up on the USGS map. Uh, let's check out the EMSC model here real quick. I have yet to update the globe here for the EMSC data. It's, I can't access it for some reason. I have to re-download uh, the Earthquake 3D program here on this computer to see uh, the EMSC data. Uh, but let's see what else we got here across the area. So last 24 hours here of data. There's that one coming in underneath the uh, Indonesia area there, Sumatra region. A couple smaller quakes here throughout the Philippines in the three range. Uh, New Zealand seeing a cluster of quakes down here. Yeah, I, I, I miss the, uh, I miss the old EMSC maps. For some reason on this laptop here it just doesn't want to work properly. Uh, but there's a couple earthquakes there in the three range, but notice the depth there pretty, pretty deep in this area. Uh, a little bit shallower one there, 
So all this deeper activity does look like it's adding a little bit of strain upstream with this most recent quake here, 19 kilometers deep for a 3.3 here uh, earlier, uh, well late last night, early this morning here. And uh, a lot of deeper activity underneath the North Island. Eventually we're going to have to see some adjustment taking place here across the area. Uh, Hawaii, things look uh, pretty quiet out here for now. Handful of smaller quakes there across the volcano, Kilauea volcano. Uh, let's see what we got here for the latest deformation data here. And Kilauea volcano still sitting at a yellow and advisory. Not a big deal yet. Uh, deformation chart here. Let's see what we got. Leveling off, it looks like, uh, since last night. Notice that little area right here, flat line. This is the last 30 days of inflation, meaning uh, vertical displacement. Here's the eruption that happened here about a week or yeah, about a week ago uh, at the southwest rift zone there at Kilauea Volcano. Short-lived eruption for about 10 hours. Dropped some um, volume right here, but we're starting to go back up here in terms of the magma accumulation underneath this area. Uh, so we're almost to that previous level that we peaked at, but not quite. And uh, it's hard to say exactly where we're going to go from here as we're looking at the stationary activity right now take place here in the last 12 hours or so. So just got to continue to watch it and see what takes place here. Um, let's see seismograph stations here, fairly minor earthquake activity and of course some of that is showing up on the USGS map but really nothing big nothing of major uh, concern at the moment there and the live from Iceland site see what else is going on out here across the world I think this is still active out here far as I know really haven't had a chance to look at it too much here's a view of uh, the crater area but it looks like one side here has collapsed this is a side that's blocking the view if there's any continued flow of lava there you go there's a little splash going on a little fountain going on so obviously it's still active in terms of an of uh, eruption um, let me go back here to meant to go to this one uh, this update here from the Icelandic Met Office put out a couple days ago, so it doesn't look like there's anything new. Of course, there has been uh, some work being done to um, limit the the lava uh, out here, the lava fields and the lava flow from damaging anything beyond the berm here. This was a couple days ago, but uh, it has reached the road up here, has crossed over, and uh, like I say, it's been a couple days since we've seen any update. Uh, there from those folks and let's see what we got we haven't checked out the inflation there since this thing is slowing down right in terms of the volume of lava output magma output here well mad lava at the surface then we should be looking at inflation rising right I guess we'll, we'll have to see why is this not working Let me check out the Savart Singi area, see if this one's working. Should be up and running. Are they down? Or is it me? It might just be me. All right. Um, that was a little weird. The internet's a little sketchy out here today, it looks like. As uh, far as the um, the level of inflation here, looks like we, we're starting to come back up here a little bit. Notice that gradual inflation, but then down a couple of the last runs here. If you look really close on this map, these last couple runs have been down, trending downward. So that tells me deflation continuing, but too early to say if we're going to see things ramp back up in terms of the uh, uh, ongoing sequence of eruptions here across the Iceland area. Something to watch pretty closely. Uh, while I pull up Yellowstone, it does look like we did have a little bit of earthquake activity. Um, 
you're stirring up here. There's one quake. Now this other activity on the uh, map here, that looks like thunderstorms. Um, not for sure if we seen any of those. I'm sure we had to have for that signal to show up like that. That was late last night. I don't even know if I'm going to be able to check it that far back. Um, 12 hours ago. Might be able to. Huh? Let's see here. There's portions of it. Look at that. See all those storms flowing through last night, 12 hours ago. All across Yellowstone National Park. So this is, there we go. Now that it's moved through, everything's off. These should, may fire back up again in the afternoon, but I wanted to show you guys that reading and that is what thunderstorms and environmental noise looks like out there across uh, Yellowstone National Park. Showed up pretty nicely across the area, even the regions over here across the eastern portion of the uh, Yellowstone Park area. So that's not earthquake activity, it's not magma movement. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Those are uh, thunderstorms brewing through the area and you can spot them pretty easy uh, in the summertime uh, when you get those afternoon thunderstorms developing. All right, uh, far as thunderstorm activity goes here, not a huge risk for some severe weather, but uh, we do have a little 2% chance there across way up north in the eastern Wyoming, it looks like, and South Dakota, maybe even a little bit here in the South Carolina region. Uh, so not a huge tornado threat today, mainly wind and some hail threats out here across the area. Uh, that's for today. Uh, for Tuesday, looks uh, not a big deal. Less of a chance here of severe weather, so things are calming down for now. I don't expect them to stay that way though for long. I think we're going to get back into an active period of severe weather across regions here of the plains and we'll we'll check back on that a little bit later but for now folks hope everyone has a good day um see this is from last night yeah just kind of a, a little eerie quietness going on right now across the uh the plates i have a feeling we'll be back here sometime this afternoon for an update on something because it uh it's quiet but it won't stay quiet for long. We'll catch you guys back out here later, folks. Enjoy your Monday. Stay safe out there.